macros, mindset, and muscles. I'm Coach James. And I'm Coach Brittany. We're here to give you the truth about health and fitness. No gimmicks, no bullshit, just just facts. What's up, Phoenix fam? What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, so we're back for another awesome episode. (laughs) Let's just dive right in. Yeah, actually, we're back because we ruffled some feathers with our episode last week. People got their feelings hurt, and they're like, oh, you think all people, all people who are overweight are lazy, and that's not true, blah, 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 blah. Like, first of all, we never fucking said that. Not at all. We said that it's a privilege to get to choose to be lazy. It's a privilege to have so many choices that you end up overweight. And let's just get to the reality of this Let's no, let's get to the reality of the situation. Let's talk about obesity and being overweight and how prevalent of a problem this is in our fucking country. Because it is. <laughs> you're you're way yeah. fired up right now. Let's I, no, I am because you know what? I've been obese. I've been the fat girl. I've been the girl who struggled with my weight and who quote unquote wasn't lazy or, you know, everything else. It wasn't my fault that I was fat, but it was. It was my fault. I'm not saying that my lifestyle and the things that were going on in my life didn't contribute to that because there are things that do contribute to it. But at the end of the day, you know, when you gain body fat, it's because you're eating too many calories. Calories in, calories out. It's just math. It is math. You know, when we're talking about fat loss, we're not talking about health here, but we're talking about fat loss. Um, you know, if you're consuming too many calories, you will gain weight. If you're consuming too little calories, you will lose weight. There's no such thing as fucking starvation mode. That doesn't exist. And that's been proven time and time again. You go to other countries where people are literally starving. They're not fat. Yeah, they they haven't adapted. (laughs) Yeah, like they're not, they're not fat. They're bone, they're skin and bones. They're not... You know, they're not like, oh, my metabolism is just really slow, so I'm storing fat. Like, no, that's literally not what your body does. What it your metabolism is slow, you just have a fast forward. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. Like what really happens is your metabolism adapts and you know, you might eat the same amount of calories that you were losing weight on, and then you keep eating that same amount of calories and your metabolism slows down. So now you're at maintenance, so you maintain, or maybe you eat even a little bit more and then you gain. Yeah, and one of the chances are that your your counting of the calories is inaccurate. Uh, the studies they did on that was people were like under recording calories by like I think it was like forty percent. Yeah, by forty percent, and then over um, estimating their activity level by like fifty percent or something like that. So you may think that you're being more active than you really are, and you think you're only eating a you know a low amount of food, but really you're eating very calorie dense foods. Which are, you know, you're not in a deficit. If you're not losing weight, you're not in a deficit. Well, and here's the thing. You know, one of the things was, oh, do you think that people who are overweight just sit around and eat all day? No, that's not what we said. And this is the this is the shit part about our like this time and age in social media. Right. Because we didn't say that. But because we didn't say now we're not saying this People assume that that's what we're saying when if you would just listen to the words being spoken, you would understand what was being said, you know. So, no, we don't think that people who are overweight just sit around and eat all day. Actually, it's quite the opposite. What usually happens is people who are overweight tend to say, I don't eat that much. And by volume standards, they don't eat that much. But what they do eat are calorie dense foods. They eat foods that are heavy in calories and then very easy to overconsume. So you might not eat much. You might eat one meal a day and a handful of nuts. But guess what? That that handful of nuts that you're eating is several hundred calories. Yeah, that one meal that you're eating is probably enough to your entire day. Yeah. To fill your calorie budget for the whole day. Yeah, especially if you're running on you know, fast food and things like that. You know, convenience, convenience foods. Convenience foods, yeah. And people just miss the mark on, or some, not everybody, but some people miss the mark and the message of the podcast. The podcast was the, the privilege of having sedentary jobs, being in these environments and food readily available to where you just pull out your phone and you can just tap on the screen and yeah. somebody brings it to yeah, you. Yeah, DoorDash. Yeah, like all you have to do is go walk to the front door to get it or, you know, go to your front lobby of your office or you know, you can go and order out any food. You can have it delivered. There's never a fucking shortage of food here. 
We're never short on protein options. We're never short on convenience choices. Yeah, and there's there's government programs even in, with people that are, you know, going under financial trouble. Like there, there's so many things in place that you know to help people uh, that are struggling. But what we talked about was with those conveniences and with those you know programs. There's no struggle. And when, when people are like, there is no other option but to go out and gather their food. Yeah, like people just completely take one thing. They only hear the parts that they want to hear and they don't put all of the pieces together. So they hear something and they didn't like that one thing, but they're too one sided to sit and listen to the whole, like the entirety of something yeah. to make sense of what was actually said. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it, you know, a lot of people get this victim mentality. And then so everything they hear is like, oh, well, actually, I'm the victim and like it's not my fault. And it's not people's fault. It's not because they're lazy and da, da, da. like that's not what was being said. Like nobody was attacking anybody. It was just it was about a, the fact that, that being lazy is a choice, that a choice. having convenience options is a choice. And you know what? I'm going to say it because I've been a victim of my own life. I have gone through the mindset work, the the mental work that it takes to actually shift your mindset from being the victim to being in control. You know, I'm not saying that bad things don't still happen to me. Of course, those type of things happen, negative things happen. But how you react to it, how you control, like how you respond is in your control. And you know, when I was obese, when I was overweight, you know, it, it wasn't my fault. I don't eat that much. You know, I go to the gym for hours every day, like this type of stuff. But the reality is, is that I did eat that much. You know, I may not have eaten that much, but I ate one meal out a day. Yeah. And it might have been like a Big Mac and some chicken nuggets or something, you know. And I'm not saying that's everybody's story. It's not. You know, health conditions um they impact how your body like your metabolism it, it impacts your me metabolic function but it's not like it's still a matter of calories in and calories out and then you add in alcohol consumption into the mix and yeah all of a sudden now you have something that's hindering your meta your metabolism already and it's just a snowball effect like i mean i use that all the time i say the snowball effect snowballs effect but it does and if you're overeating and underactive and you're adding in alcohol into the mix. And, and then you don't even fucking track your food because, you know, you don't even really know what a portion size is because you think that two tablespoons of peanut butter, uh, what you're actually eating is probably four to four six to tablespoons of peanut butter. Yeah. You know, uh, that chicken breast that you, you know, you're eating. I'm not, again, protein. Great. Awesome. You can still overconsume calories with protein. Um, you know, that chicken breast that you think is four ounces is actually 12 ounces. Yeah. Like all these things, they, they matter, they add up. And, um, we have way too much information available at our hands. We have way too much, too many conveniences and tools here, like available to us, um, to play the victim in this, in, in with our health. Yeah. And if it, like you're listening to this podcast and all these words are words you've never heard before, like macros and all those things, we put out information about all this, like in the the women's group, uh, macros. I mean, uh, yeah, macros, mindset, and muscles for women. Um, we put things out on social media, on Instagram, TikTok. We we put out all these things. So if you do need more information about it, we do have those resources. Uh, but the majority of people, I mean, they, I mean, people, oh. This is a tough one, and it's just frustrating. I hate that uh, uh, we were receiving. You know, it was directed toward me at first, um, particularly because of the way that I, I kind of promoted that podcast on TikTok. You know, and I did it that way on intentional, like, "Hey, that privilege, just talk about it. Go watch it before uh, it gets pulled down and we get canceled." And like people before even listening to it were like, "Oh, you think fat, fat people are lazy? Oh, blah blah blah." Like, like clearly, you didn't even listen to it. And uh, and I knew as soon as uh, I would start responding, this commit. Well, you're not overweight. You don't know what it's like. Blah 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 blah. And Brittany chimed in on on responses, and because uh, she knows, like she lived it. She's walked that path. Like she's 
you know, she can speak on it firsthand, not just from a book, but from real life experience. And also, like, I'm not somebody that, you know, like, I gain fat very easily. I'm a short person. My energy, like, the amount of calories that I have to consume to, like, maintain is not very, it's not very high. You know, I'm a short person. So um, if I'm not intentional with all of these things, you know, there are plenty of times where I'm like, oh, you know what, I, I don't feel like doing that today. Eh, I'm just gonna be lazy today, you know, like, I'm not gonna get my steps or whatever. And when I start falling into that trap of picking the easy way, you know, the quote unquote easy way, like, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna relax. Yeah. Um, You know, I'm not gonna track my food, whatever, like I can, I can eat intuitively, you know, with mindful portions. But for me, I'm a data person. I love numbers. Like I like being able to track data and see how my body responds to that, like to what my body is given. So when I track data, I'm more diligent about my stuff. You know, when I make it a point to get in my steps, one, I feel better. Yeah. It don't hurt. I think that's a big thing that people don't understand too. Your you know, feels yeah. Uh, how many people have, like, if you're listening to this, you know, the likelihood of you having some lower back issues is probably pretty high. Um, I think I've met I I've met less people that don't have back issues. Yeah. Um it's more of a prevalent thing because when we're sedentary, you know, we sit most like most jobs require a lot of sitting these days. And uh the truly active jobs are are rare. Um it's just not not well okay. also like being like over when you start getting overweight. You're less active, you're moving less, so you're not as limber. Um, each, you know, the additional weight is putting more pressure and uh, strain on the joints. Um, it makes everything more difficult. And then also, I mean, if you're holding a lot of weight in your front, like your your front heavy, uh, you, that pulls around on those muscles on your back. If a woman's, you know, breasts are too large, like it pulls and puts pressure on her lower back. Like same thing with, you know, men. Like you get to a certain size, I mean, you're it's you will put a strain on your body if you got tight i mean uh sensitive up lower back back issues you probably got hamstring issues and which you know it just it trickles it's a trickle effect but also like when you're more sedentary you ache more we've talked about this in plenty of podcast episodes but i think that's a big thing people have too is you know they're like they get overweight and they get miserable, you know, they feel like crap. Again, speaking from personal experience, I'm not singling anybody out. I'm not pointing any fingers like I've been in this situation. So I'm speaking from my personal experience here. But your body just hurts, your energy levels plummet, and you get in this almost depressive cycle because you feel like shit, your body feels like shit, you feel like shit about your body, like you're not confident, you're embarrassed, but at the same time, you don't have energy like to do anything. So you don't do anything. But if you did do stuff, your energy levels would increase. Your confidence would increase. Your aches and pains would decrease. So it's kind of like a, you know. Yeah, and you start going after very pleasurable foods of, you know. Highly palatable. Palatable, sugary, salt, salty. Salty. Lots of fat, lots of carbs. Again, fats and carbs on their own are not like bad. And you get this like this rush of like, oh, I feel good at the moment. You get this little dopamine hit, and then you feel shitty for your choices. And this entire cycle, as you were explaining it just then, is step by step, just like a drug addiction. Yeah, it really is. Like you feel bad. It's this cycle of feeling bad uh, and feeling terrible about choices and all this stuff. Then you do this bad thing or not bad thing, but you do this thing that's not good for your health for a temporary relief. And then you feel terrible about it. And as the cycle continues and you don't do anything about it. it. It's a, it is a cycle. And you know, it's not even, it's not necessarily that the food is like the drug quote unquote, it's the response. It's how you train your body. No, it's actually, so, it's more the, it's self-medication. That's what I'm saying. It's like how you cope with things, right? Yeah. So like if you constantly turn to, you know, whatever, you know, it is food, drugs, alcohol, Facts. your body learns to crave that when you're stressed, you know, in those type of situations. And it when you 
choose that thing and like you say you get that dopamine hit like that's the natural high that your body gets from doing that and i feel like the more that you do this then the more your body craves it um which is why i feel like a lot of people um, struggle so much to make the changes because their body's craving what they've always known. And this is why a lot of people don't see success long term because they look for a short term solution. They're like, oh, I'm going to diet for eight weeks really hard and work out six days a week and do this and do that. But they don't actually change their lifestyle. They're just doing something temporarily instead of looking at the long term solution, which is to make small, sustainable changes, work on shifting the mindset, work on shifting those daily habits so that you have healthy coping mechanisms and you have healthy fitness routines and healthy eating habits. Um, like all of these things play such a big role in your long-term health. And we just have so much information that, and so many privileges here in the United States that many other countries don't have. And I'm not saying that there aren't people that don't struggle in the U.S. either. Um, there are people that struggle. There's home. There we have a a very large homeless population. Yeah. Um. You know. So of course, like that's an issue too. But we're talking about just the, in, the in, average Joe. Yes. Middle class. We're in middle lower class. Whatever you know. The working man. The working woman. You know. All this can be done. Just I mean, at almost any level of your economic status. I mean, you control what you eat. So like if you're able to buy groceries, you have a choice of which groceries that you do buy. Mm. You choose the process, the quick, the cookies and, and uh, ramen and um, all these very satiating, uh, high fat processed foods. They're easy on the go. Then you're, you're going to feel that as you're going to see that in your body. You're going to feel that in your body. Uh, but if you buy, you know, vegetables and just meats and things and you actually cook uh, and you control what's in the food then you know, you feel differently, your body responds differently. You do. You feel a lot different. It, it, is, it just comes down to a choice on, you know, are you going to put in a little work or are you not going to put in a little work? And, you know, think about it, though, too, right? We're here and, and homeless, like for people who be like, well, we have homeless people here. Well, I, I haven't really just seen a whole bunch of like obese homeless people either. Uh, no, you don't. You know, because they don't have the privileges that most people have listening to this episode. So really, you can bring it home. It doesn't even have to be talking about another country, but you can think about people that are less fortunate, that don't have the resources that you have, um, you know, that don't have the choices that you have. Um, maybe they did once upon a time and they got sucked into drugs or, you know, lifestyle, whatever. A terrible divorce and lost, you know, everything. Yeah. Uh, lost a child or something. If something is put them in there, you know. Yeah. On that path. Military service, PTSD. Yeah. I mean, all that type of stuff, which, you know, a lot of homeless people do have mental health issues. But again, like, this is more reason why, like, you have to think about your problems and realize that a lot of your problems are caused by you. So conflicted. And um, that's kind of a harsh reality and a hard thing for a lot of people to accept that they're the reason why, you know, their body is the way that it is, um, their choices, the things that they do, um, the way that you allow people to treat you. You know, if if you are... Um, I, I've been in, I've been in, you know, an abusive relationship and that's a hard thing to do, um, to deal with. And, you know, your life feels threatened and you're scared for your life. It, it's easy to let yourself go in those situations. And, and I say, let yourself go, but like, really like you're under somebody else's control and it's a vicious cycle to kind of break. Well, your priority shift is not, I mean, you're, it, you're it's like, survival. it's survival. Yeah. It's, what's important is, is just living. Yeah. Not not prospering. It's just like getting through the day. Maybe I don't know. You know, I wasn't in that situation, but you know, I would think you know you're going to prioritize life differently. Yeah, and it's just I don't know. There is so much more nuance than you know, um, than any than you can put into words. Like really, 
it's just a bigger, it's a bigger issue. But I just think that we as Americans just take things for granted. Um, I think in general, uh, the society that we're in now doesn't take accountability for their own. Actions. It's it's always somebody else's fault. Yeah, it's always a point the finger. You know, I went through this. Uh, you know, or I'm like no. this because of this, or you know, like my parent, like my childhood, or well, I grew you know, up like yeah. this. Like you know what? Everybody has their fucking shit. My mom was a fucking drug addict. Like, um, you know, like my mom uh, left me in a state when I was a teenager to figure it out. And you know what? I did. I struggled. I went through trauma. I did all kinds of things. But if you do the work, like things, it makes you better. It makes you stronger. It does. And, you know, like we were... We were a welfare welfare family. Like we lived in Section Eight housing, and you know we didn't really like we had food stamps. But if we didn't have food stamps, like we didn't have groceries. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like you can always point to something as an excuse, but like you know, now I was a drug addict, and you know, for a long time I looked back and like, well, you know, uh, uh, things are the way they are because of this and this and. Then, you know, I, I put put blame on everything. And yes, I went, you know, there are traumatic things that people go through, but like finally it fucking clicked that like, yes, things happen, but like it's up to me to change. Like it, like how you respond initially to a trauma, like that's that's one thing. But like if I want to live, I had to put in some work somewhere. Like I had to put in some work. Like, like this is destroying my life. It's about to kill me. I had to do something about it and I had to go to work. I did. I had to face that shit and be like, okay, yes, that happened. Nobody else gives a fuck. Only person that's killing is me. Is you. It only hurts you. It's your life. Yeah. Nobody else gives a shit. Um, and if I want to live, I had to do something about it. And so I, I did. And it, it's terrifying, <laughs> you know, facing your shit. And stop blaming things and be like, you know what? It was me. It's me. Yeah. The problem is me. Yeah. How I responded to things, you know, it, like, I fucked up. I got to change. I got I to gotta fix this. It's up to me if I want to live. I think that's the biggest thing is just learning to be able to accept responsibility for things, you know, for your, for your life. Yeah. Your life, like you're the one that has to live this life. You're the one that has to deal with the health conditions. You're the one that has to deal with the aches and pains. You're the one that has to deal with aging. You only get one fucking life to live. Yeah. That's it. One life to live. The quality of it is up to you. Yeah. So how are you going to choose to live it? Are you going to keep making excuses? And I'm saying excuses right now. You know, but are you going to keep being a victim of your own life or are you going to take control and do everything that you can? Not not giving the sob story version like, oh, I do everything. I don't eat that much. I exercise. I'm active. Most of the population is not as active as they think they are. Yeah, that's the story you're just telling yourself in your head over and over again. Like you believe your own bullshit. Yeah. If you sit at a desk and that's your job. For at least eight hours a day, five days a week, you are not an active person. No, you are. You are. You are sedentary you are for forty hours out of the week. You sleep. We'll say six. The average person sleeps six hours a night, so fourteen hours a day, or eight forty, and then six times, or seven times six, forty-two, eighty-two hours a week yeah, that you are not active. Yeah, over a third of your day, you're just sitting down at work. You know, and then that's not counting your, your commuting and then you get home and you Netflix and chill. Yeah. As you order. But you can't, but, but you're not that active and you or you're, you are, active. you are active and I don't eat that much. And I don't know why I'm having these health issues. Like take a look, like a hard look at your lifestyle and be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. That's what, that's what we're here to do. We're help you. We're here to help you see the real changes that you can make. We're not here to shame anybody. We don't shame anybody. Any client that has ever worked with us will tell you we have never 
shame them for anything. We help them make sustainable changes. We help them find the gaps in their schedule, find the routines that work for their life because not everybody's life is the same. Not everybody's schedule is the same. But instead of saying, well, I can't do it because of this, we help people be like, okay, I can do this. I can't do an hour a day, but I can do 20 minutes, three times a week or whatever. Like we help find that balance because that's the big problem is people don't, they look at reasons why they can't instead of things that they can. Yeah. They look at this one thing like, I can't do that. And and just generally like now that the switch is off, I can't do it. Yeah. Instead of like, you've already convinced. Like you were saying, what can I do? It's like, as soon as it, you know, it's a negative, I can't. And then, I can't send their head and then I can't, I can't, I can't. Then what about that? I can't like. Yeah. So you already think that you can't do anything instead of believing that you can and you will. Yeah. You know, if I want to do something and I wasn't always like this, but if I want to do something now, I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. She's going she to book it. She's going to happen. You know, like that's, I'm a doer. Like I make shit happen for myself, for my kids, for my family. That's just my personality now. Haven't always been like that, but it took a lot of work on my mindset. You know, like I I had to fake it until I made it Oh yeah, with that type of stuff. Because once you realize what you're capable of, there are no limits. Exactly what you said. Like you had to fake it till you make it. Like So early on when I started this whole thing, uh, the the sobriety thing, the the gym thing, everything. um, So childish, but I don't care. Um, in the in the early days, my goal was like I was like, all right. When somebody's like, oh, you gotta be your own superhero. Like if if you were the superhero of your story, like what would you do? And so like every day, I, like I just, throughout the day, it's always like, all right, what would the hero do? What would the hero do? Not what I want to do. Not what the voice in my head says. What is it? What would the hero do? All right, the hero would eat this for breakfast. Okay, I'm like, I I don't want to cook. It doesn't matter. The hero's going would do that. So like I'd have to do it, and. uh well, he would work out. Okay. Well, I don't want to work out. Well, the hero would, and I want to be the hero. So, like, I just, that just kept going on and on. It was like, all right, what would Captain America do? What would Captain do? What would Cap do? Like, it's so dumb, but like, that was my goal. It was like, Captain America. That was it. That was, you know, and that's what made it click in my head. Like, I had to get outside of the, the bullshit and the negative talk uh, that was going in my head that it kept saying, Oh, you're never going to get sober. You're never going to stay sober. You're never going to have a real life. You're not going to have friends. You're not going to have a family. You're not going to have this. Um, you know, all these things that it just kept telling me, I can't, I can't, I can't, you can't. I, like, I had to shut it off and like stop thinking <laughs> or listening to what was conditioned in my head because it was just been playing for so long. Like that's all I knew. It was just like this. The negative voice. This negative voice. And it's like, and then. As I started doing these other things, that voice got quieter. It got more quiet. And then I started to say, tell myself I can do these things. Even when I'm scared. I get scared a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's normal. You know, it's doing something new and challenging. Like, it's scary. Like, what if I fail? Well, what if you don't? You know? Like, yeah. what if you don't fail? What if you succeed? Or what if you fail and you just fucking get up and go again? Yeah. You know, what if like you go through this prep and you don't win first place? Well, guess what? You come back better. You come back stronger. You keep doing it because it's you against you. Yeah. Like you're the only person, like you're the only competition that matters. So, yeah. God, there's so many things popping in. Yeah. And it's just like, you know? because like, it was, it was like, I was so scared of life. I was so scared because of things that have happened and I avoided people and, and life in general that I didn't want to participate in anything. I was just and like, what if, what if, what's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> you know, really? I mean, I'm already getting all the negative because I'm not doing anything. I'm isolated as hell. Anyway. This ain't the James show. It's just. No, but speaking on personal experience and how you work through things, like you never know who that might click to. Like there could be a a guy listening to this who loves superheroes and might be thinking, you know, the same thing. Like, okay, I'm going to be the hero of my fucking story, you know? And and I think that's. Really was that simple. Like I had to just make it that simple to me. It was just. I was Captain America. I was going to be Captain America. 
Yeah, it's. And you should be Captain America of your story too. You sure. who's listening to this. But that's really what we wanted to kind of follow up on. Um, you know, we we aren't we aren't shaming people. We are very supportive of all of our clients. We have clients in all walks of life. You know, we have clients that are young. We have clients that are old. We have moms. We have grandmas. You know, we have younger husbands, dads. Like we work with all kinds of people, and we love helping each person find their groove because their groove is different from the next client from the next client. Um, but just understand that you have a ton of resources and things at your fingertips, you know, knowledge and Google, like research articles, PubMed, um, you have, you know, professionals, not your favorite fucking fit fluencer, but actual professionals in the field that know what the fuck they're talking about that, you know, they put out so much information that's helpful. Like there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to take control of your health and take control of your body and live a life that you have always dreamed of. Yeah. And if you look at yourself and can be honest, look at yourself and honestly, uh, and take accountability for, you know, things that have happened where you, maybe where you are now, if you can do that, then you'll also have the ability to change your life. Mm -hmm. You hold the key. Like, yeah, whatever happened to this point happened. But like you from here on out, like you can choose to how the story ends or the next chapter. You are the writer of the story. Yeah. Like right now, like you decide right now, like, all right, I'm going to start a fitness journey today. And you go put your shoes on and you go outside and you walk. You're on a fitness journey. Yeah. A hundred percent. You're on it, man. You're going to post about it and you can tag us. I can't wait. Yeah. Please do. So I don't know. That's just, I, I don't normally um explain myself or feel like I have to justify what I say but I don't like when people try to twist something into their own narrative um you know we're here to help we're not here to put people down but also we're here to keep it real yeah. and that's one thing that my clients will say too you know like I'm not I'm not a tough person until I have to be. And when you're standing in your own way, I'm going to tell you when you're creating your own problems, like I'm going to tell you, you know, and that's just how I am. I'm a direct person. I'm not going to co-sign your bullshit and your excuses. You know, there's a difference between something being a legitimate reason and excuses and 90% of what people say, their excuses. So it comes from love. Like you, you point out the obvious, but you're, you see what's happening and you're going to address it because if you address it, there's a chance that it can be changed. hundred percent. You know, and it, but if you just sugarcoat it and let it, you know, like you said, co-sign the bullshit, then the bullshit continues and the bullshit grows. And then that next thing you know, it's all just bullshit. All bullshit. It's all bullshit. So we hope that you actually take the time to uh, listen to this whole fucking episode. Yeah. <laughs> before you start throwing stones. Maybe listen to all of the previous episode before you start throwing stones yeah, and saying shit. Now. Yeah, saying shit that the, wasn't said. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because clearly in the 50 previous uh, episodes, we are not calling anybody any kind of names or shaming because we've lived this life firsthand and all we're doing is trying to help someone else like us. Mm. Count your blessings. I... <laughs> Anyways, um, that's all we really got for today. So I hope that I hope this clicks for some people. Um, I know that others will listen to this and they're probably still going to get pissed off or get their feelings hurt, but um, that's okay. Like your the way that you consume information may not be the way that we speak it, and that's that's okay. Yeah, you know, you there's you should ask yourself why is that bothering you? Yeah. Why, why did this upset you? Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, um, hope y'all enjoy this, and you have a great week ahead, and we will uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Macros Mindset and Muscles. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Brittany. We're, We're out. out.